Tesla has been getting a lot of attention lately in the tech community, especially since they released their brand new product. This next generation robot has amazed people with its faster walking speed, significantly lighter weight, and the addition of advanced fingertip sensors. A real step forward in robotics today's movie is an interesting look into the world of robotics. It focuses on the latest developments in Tesla's second generation bot, and why one expert thinks the Tesla bot has a big future ahead of it. L said they would be able to do useful work in the factory sometime next year, which I think he meant 2024, and I'm sure they will. I know Elon says prototypes are easy and production is hard, but when it comes to the humanoid robot, prototypes will be easy and production will be hard. But when it comes to the humanoid robot, prototypes will be easy and production will be hard. I've always thought, oh, yeah, they'll be able to make it pretty quickly. This expert brings a lot of knowledge from starting two robotics companies and keeping a close eye on industry trends. Before we start, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Tesla Stock News. Last week, we talked about how experts found secret Easter eggs and went into great detail about this groundbreaking invention. When Tesla showed off their new bot this next, the tech community went crazy with joy. Marvel impressed me with how fast it made me walk and how much weight it lost. It's interesting that it now has improved hand talent and advanced finger sensors, which is a big step forward for robotics. The expert brings up some interesting points about the bot's weight, which was thought to be around 125 LB, and talks about the technological feats that were used to cut it down by 10 kg. This is compared to Boston and other robots on the market. Dynamic spot and number to see how worn out Tesla Stan Scott's in-depth analysis includes all of the bot's parts from the actuators too. The battery packs. This shows how complicated the engineering is that goes into making something lighter without losing its usefulness. As Scott talks about possible ways to cut down on weight, the check gets very technical. He thinks that changes in materials like switching to plastics and improvements in manufacturing might have played a big part. This change affects the bot's weight as well as its speed and ability to do its job. What everyone wants to know is how much the Tesla bot weighs. Even though it has lost 10 kg, the exact weight is still a secret, which makes tech fans curious. Tesla's method to designing robots isn't just about making them work, it's also about making them scalable and easy to make in large numbers. The second generation bot, which is sleeker and more refined, looks like it's ready to be made on a big scale. The changes aren't just for looks, they're also strategic. For example, the bot's pelvis has been made simpler by combining what were once different front and back parts into a single piece. This cut down on parts not only makes the load lighter, but it also speeds up production, which could lead to rapid, cost-effective manufacturing. The next thing that people talk about is how the bot's walking speed has gotten 30% faster. What does this really mean? The bot's speed hasn't been measured, so we can only guess. Tesla says the goal is to keep the bot's speed below 5 mph to ensure safety, but for practical purposes like factory work, a speed of around 3 mph is more than enough. Looking at the bot's speed, it seems to be traveling at about 1.5 m per second, which is just under 2 mph. This is a great speed for places like factories where efficiency and safety are very important. Still, the question remains, is the Tesla bot ready for factory use right now? While it may be more of a demonstration model for now, its skills suggest that it's almost ready to be used in the real world. At first, Tesla only had a few dozen of the first generation of bots. Surprisingly, this small number was enough for training, thanks in large part to advanced simulation techniques. This goes against earlier predictions that they would need at least 100 bots for a key part of Tesla's robot development is the actuators, which allow the robot to move. These complex parts, which are essential to the robot's functionality, should be ready for mass production around. November, Tesla also has plenty of other parts, like batteries and FSD chips. The actuators are the most important part of increasing output. In the coming months, we expect production numbers to slowly rise. At first, a few dozen bots might be sent to different places for testing and training. As the production process continues, we expect a big increase in numbers by the end of next year. Depending on how well the design works, hundreds of these robots could be made. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, said that these robots could be useful in factories as soon as next year. While he was cautious in his statements during earnings calls, it's likely that these robots will be working by the middle of next year. The difficult task of going from a prototype to mass production, which is common in robotics, doesn't seem to be a problem for Tesla's humanoid robot. One important feature of the robot's design is its focus on safety and compliance, especially in a factory setting. For example, earlier concerns about pinch and poke hazards have been addressed with changes like elbow guards and possible fabric coverings for more sensitive areas. These changes show Tesla's dedication to making a robot that can safely work alongside humans in terms of design improvements. We have seen important improvements. The actuators are now placed so that the robot's wrist can be more compact. This makes it easier for it to move around and get into tight areas. The hands have been totally redesigned and given new sensors to make them work better. 
Even though the pelvis hasn't changed in terms of how it moves, it has a new shape that makes it more compact and efficient. These changes aren't just for looks, they're also useful. The robot now walks more naturally thanks to better foot and hip mechanics. The robot can walk 30% faster now that it can move from heel to toe. This shows how committed Tesla is to always making things better. The shoulders on the second generation bot are a big difference from the first. The shoulder servo axis used to be flat, but now there's a small eight deg slope that makes the robot's range of motion better and keeps problems like the polar, the singular, this change. While it may not seem like much, makes the robot much more useful. The system for the A. Elbow has also changed in interesting ways. There is black fabric on the inside of the new model's elbow, which makes us wonder what it hides. The elbow mechanism seems to be the same, but its packaging has changed for practical reasons, possibly to make room for cables or cooling needs in our in-depth analysis. It's clear that these changes to the design aren't just for looks, they make the robot safer and more efficient. The elbow wants a chance. The protrusions that were a danger are now covered with hard plastic and cloth, making the power sources safer and easier to use. The robot's shape may have been changed to fit a different set of batteries. People are wondering if Tesla has moved from using 2170 cells to the bigger 4680 cells. However, based on current supply and energy density factors, it's more likely that the robot still uses the 2170 cells, though they may be rearranged to work better. Aside from fans, other parts that have been talked about are cooling systems and how they work. Some people think that liquid cooling methods could be used to keep the robot's electronics at the right. Temperature. The robot's connection system has changed the attachment points have moved from the head to the shoulder. This is another interesting thing to notice. This change was carefully made to make sure the robot will last and work properly by spreading the weight out more evenly and avoiding stress on the neck motors. A new video shows three Optimus models being put together in different states. Claudia Missouri from John's channel was the first to notice this. This is strange revelation shows how. Quickly, Tesla's robot research is moving forward. A big topic of interest has been the emergency off button, which used to be behind the robot's neck, but can't be seen in new footage, leading to rumors about its new location. Upon closer inspection, what looks like a red button can be seen at the lower back of the robot, which seems like an odd place for such an important feature. Next, we'll talk about the robot's energy efficiency and longevity. There has been doubt about whether the bots could work for an entire eight hour shift on a single charge. To counter this, it's important to remember that Tesla's 2170 batteries, which are widely found in laptops, are very efficient. A laptop can run for hours on a single charge, even when it's doing a lot of things and showing pictures. Tesla's full self-driving system is even better optimized, which means that the Optimus bot might be able to work efficiently for longer amounts of time. Even though the Optimus battery pack is only about one third the size of a Model Y's, it has enough power to drive a Model Y for 10 miles at fast speeds, which shows how power efficient the bot is. As an example, look at the actuator that lifted a half ton grand piano during the demonstration. Lifting such a heavy object requires surprisingly less power than one might think, which suggests that the robot's battery could handle such activities for a long time. Additionally, the ability to charge the robot continuously while it works opens up new ways to improve its operational efficiency. Tesla's chief designer hinted at wireless induction charging in an interview with Jay Leno, which could let the bot charge without having to physically plug in. This technology, along with improvements in inductive and capacitive charging from companies in Quebec, means that Optimus could possibly work around the clock without needing to be charged by a person, while other humanoid robot companies Target run times range from 1.5 to 5 hours, but Tesla seems to be shooting for an amazing 8-hour endurance. This is because the Optimus has a bigger battery pack, more efficient motors, and a better battery management system. Many other robots, on the other hand, have smaller batteries, usually less than a kilowatt hour, which limits how long they can work. There have been big changes to Tesla's Optimus. The robot now has better sensors in its feet and a more flexible toe box, which makes it more mobile and improves its balance. Adding sensors to the robot's fingertip was not initially thought to be necessary, but Tesla has decided to do so, indicating a high level of tactile sensitivity possibly sufficient to read Braille. Other improvements include the robot's overall speed and responsiveness, especially in its hands, which were previously slower to move. The latest version of Optimus has much faster hand movements, which is important for operational efficiency in a factory setting. This increase in speed could be due to both mechanical improvements and faster AI decision-making processes. As for Production scalability, there's a lot of excitement about Tesla's ability to mass produce these robots with the actuators now appearing to be finalized. The robotics community is very excited, especially after the recent demonstration of the sleeker, more refined version of Optimus. Uh, this robot not only shows Tesla's innovative approach to design and functionality, but it also sets a new standard for what humanoid robots can do. 
as anticipation builds for AI Day 3. Which is expected to happen in the first quarter of 2024, the robotics community eagerly awaits new demonstrations. The next one is likely to show how the bot can be used in a factory, going beyond the impressive features already shown, like speed and dexterity, to show how it can be used in the real world. After a lot of hard work, Tesla's Optimus bot now has better walking skills and more advanced sensors in its fingertips. These traits suggest that there is a bigger focus on real-world applications, especially in business settings. The next demonstration should solidify the bot's place in operational settings, going beyond simple tasks to more complex real-world uses. Looking ahead, there's talk about how big the bot will be when it's ready for mass production. Many people are cautiously optimistic because Tesla's technology is improving quickly, which suggests that the company may be taking a more aggressive approach to production. There is a lot of talk about the chance that Tesla will increase production to meet the needs of its factories. Everyone agrees that Tesla will probably start by putting the bot to work on lower volume production lines like the SNX lines to keep things running smoothly and give people the best chance to learn. The possible problems with deploying the bot are being carefully looked at, and the hardware. It seems to be making good progress. However, concerns have been raised about the AI's readiness and the bot's overall dependability, especially during long operations. The current focus is on improving the AI and making sure the bot can handle long tasks without many problems. That's all we have to say about the Tesla bot for now. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Tesla Stock News.